spanakopita, a little Greek dish with flaky phyllo pastry, cheeses, lots of cheeses, and spinach. And I'm just gonna pull that all together and show you. It is a little bit of prep getting it uh, to that sort of stage, and I'll show you how we have to butter each layer of the phyllo pastry. But let's start off. Uh, I've got that, uh, the oven heated, 180 degrees, so I just wanna warm that up, get that started. Maggie supporting, got a little bit of butter in there, you don't need to see that, but got a bit of butter in there. I will put just a little bit of garlic in here because I just want to fry off a little bit of the onions first. And the rest of that garlic we're going to put in here. So essentially what I'm doing, I'm, I'm creating a situation where a few things cooking and the rest will go into this dish here, which is essentially the mix of the spanakopita. So, uh, I've got a, a slab of butter there too, which I want to whack in the microwave just to uh, melt it down because we'll be using that with a brush. That's the best thing to help you, with a brush to do each layer of the phyllo pastry. So I'll just put that in there for 30 seconds. Don't know how to do it, we've got a bit of time. <coughs> and we will then get that, sorry, hiding there, get that uh, red onion just to, again, just steam it off in there. Get it, sweat off now this takes about a half hour cook or so in the oven once we've got all the mixture ready um, so it doesn't matter if it's not completely cooked this onion because uh, it will soften up in that time once it's in the oven as well okay so let's have a look at this now I've got fresh spinach there now you're going to use a bit you'll see that fresh spinach breaks up a fair bit but what I've also got there is some frozen spinach as well now, if you're gonna use frozen spinach and it's gonna thaw out, make sure you squeeze the liquid out because you don't want it too liquidy because your spanakopita won't be crisp and fluffy when it's cooked. So, get as much as that liquid out. I've already done that, I've given it a good squeeze. You can see there, just put in what you can there. Um, I've got a few uh, basil leaves there that might wanna throw in. Again, just some sort of little herby flavors that we're gonna get going uh, in this. And, and it's one of those things, you can kind of add a lot of stuff into it. You can add a lot of different cheeses, uh, which you can see that I've got here. A, a little bit of oregano as well might be your flavour. Uh, just again, don't put too much in because you don't want it too, some people don't like it too herby. And um, I'm one of those people. But a little splash of oil as well, just to help it. Now what's gonna bind all this together is and you'll notice that we're really sort of loading in so i've got a feta cheese here we're going to bind it with eggs but i've got a feta cheese here now this has been crumbled this feta all right so pre-crumbled you can buy it like that or you can buy uh buy a block of uh greek feta and break it up yourself make it easier it's already pre-crumbled so give it that way now i've got here ricotta as well so ricotta cheese now we probably don't need all of that ricotta let's see how we go kind of feel like I get a bit excited by the cheese factor. There's a, a combination, a bit of uh, parmesan and uh, mozzarella in there as well. Again, let's just see what we can do with it. And just making sure we're still checking on those onions. Yep, they're almost done. And just really mixing up. Now it is quite tricky this because for a start, my bowl's not big enough, um, but really just trying to mix it all together. Now, getting in those eggs as well, now this is what binds it together, right? You want these eggs in there to help, don't have the shelling, to help bind it together. Uh, and it really does really help. Like you could do three or four, I've, I've done four there. This is gonna feed it probably around eight people. It's good hot or it's good cold, doesn't really matter. Now, I wouldn't be putting any salt in because of all the cheeses in there already. There's, if I put salt in to taste later on, but a little bit of pepper there. And here's another thing, if you've got these on the side, some pine nuts, all right? Just a, a small little handful of pine nuts, maybe a little bit more. Um, a small little handful of pine nuts, so just check that butter's melting nicely there. That is, and that's what we're gonna use shortly. I'm gonna turn that off there, bring, bring it all together, mix it up. And once we're done that, I'm gonna show you how to do the phyllo pastry. Okay, Bruce, just a little bit extra pepper in there. So that's done, mix that all in. Uh, I've got our butter, uh, pre-heated or, or um, defrosted as such. Uh, now, what I want to do is, there's the phyllo pastry. I'm just going to show you what to do here. So in a, in a pan, you could use a uh, whatever size pan, a round pan, like a square pan. I've actually put in a little bit of brown uh, baking paper. It just kind of helps it 
uh, not stick the bottom. And also, just with some of those edges, just it's worth whacking a little bit of that, uh, that the oil on there, and that'll help the paper stay down a little bit too. Again, just just helping it bushfire, just helping it uh, so it's not too sticky. Now, the whole concept of the phyllo pastry is every layer you do, you put uh, the butter on. So you're brushing the butter on like a paintbrush. And with this, it, because it's so thin and light, uh, that's exactly what you want. So I've got a pack of phyllo pastry here, and you wanna do about six, seven sheets down the bottom, put in the mixture, and then six, seven sheets on top. And then I'm gonna show you what that looks like once we get it going. So, Open it up so you can uh, get the full length of the sheet there. And just by carefully picking up each sheet. So this has been out of the freezer for about half an hour or so. And what you can see is it's really light. Right? This filo pastry is really light. So just with just a layer, and fortunately this uh, is almost the same size as the uh, tray itself. So just with the first layer, this is what you want to do. is just literally just a brushing of the butter for each layer that we do. As I said, we'll do six or so layers of this before we then put in our spanner copper mixture. Now, as I said, this is, can be eaten out of the oven, wait for it to cool a little bit, or it can be cool with uh, the next day's lunch, or even little hors d'oeuvres, depending on how you want to cut it up. And I'll show you a couple of ways how to actually score the phyllo pastry or the spanakopita so it gives that great little look. So let me go with that and we'll come back once we've done about six of those sheets. So those six, uh, the, the bottom layers of those phyllo pastry are done, plastered with uh, that melted butter. Uh, I've got the mixture here. Just having a look at that mixture, as good as it looks right, I just want to do something which is fairly predictable. It's just a little pinch of chilli, just to give it that little uh, Mediterranean lift and I had a look and I thought well I might as well use all that ricotta right so I'd rather do that than waste it doesn't really matter just use that to scrape that in and then this becomes our spanner filler so just give that a quick little how's your father remember this has got a whole lot of cheese spinach garlic Pepper, I held back on the salt, a little bit of chilli, those pre-cooked, uh, diced up red onions, and a little bit of oregano, and some of those pine nuts. So a great uh, combo all held together with those four eggs to help bind together. So it's as simple as this. So bringing that over, remember we're gonna put the top, the lid on it, or the, the next layer, and just pretty simple, folding it out, or folding it in, Depends which way you look at it, into your dish. Remember your oven's on at 180 degrees. I'm just getting as much of that out as possible. Makes it easier to clean up later if you get it all out now. And Maggie, you're looking really almost ready for this. Well, it's gonna take about half an hour, so she might have to wait, and so will you. So just patting it down. Don't pat it down too hard, because you don't want it to be too uh, too solid down the bottom. You just want to kind of lightly pat it down so it doesn't feel like you're biting into a slab of concrete. Take it off the edge there and that's it. So what we want to do with that is now the same process we did before. Just with your phyllo pastry layers, just filling it up it, one by one. You've still got your melted butter. It fortunately fits the size of this tray or pan and just painting it on like that it's really going to help give it that light light feeling of that uh, phyllo pastry when you crunch into it so two again same process with the butter melted butter look at that awesome Looks great. Again, try not to push down on it because you want to keep it as light as possible. Uh, you don't want to push that right down. Doesn't matter if you rip those little bits, they're not the, the show piece as such. Same process, a little bit of butter there. You will get used to this. Don't overload, don't do it too much because you'll find it'll get a bit too wet. 
couple more bits there. So it starts to get a lot easier as you get more comfortable with layering it down. Bring it down to the edge a little bit again, not pushing it down too hard. There's a double one there, if you can, pull them apart. I'll keep going with this and I'll show you the last bit when we score the pastry at the I've end. I've done the bottom layers, we've done the centre, I've done the top layers, a bit of onion. Um, I, I just want to show you, to score this now, so it just lightly run the knife through, obviously it needs to be a sharp knife, and just, and you'll, you'll see what I'm doing in a second, just get into the cut slightly through it. it doesn't have to cut all the way through you can if you want it just seems to break up a little bit so just be careful with that and we'll probably get three across there one there we do two you can see that butter oozing through here's another little cool trick so you could do little slices or little triangles right and and so then they become your little serves don't have to this is just a little idea that I've seen before. And one, two, three, and that one's gone for there. Now, your last layer of butter just on top. Again, making sure you haven't pushed it down too hard. Doesn't matter if you have, won't be too bad. Your oven's on, you're almost ready to go with this. You might want to get a, a nice Greek salad prepped whilst this is in the oven, because this is gonna take about 30 minutes in the oven. Now, again, optional, but sesame seeds on top. All right, just gives that nice little, well, visually it looks great. And you get that kind of sesame, nutty little flavor as well that goes with Spanakopita. So that's gonna go into the oven now for about 30 minutes. And we'll check it to see if it's that golden brown color, because that's what you want and hopefully those scores and little triangles looks awesome. We'll see you soon.